It doesn't matter how experienced we are in our photography, at some stage we'll make a mistake. When I saw these thumbnails much later on on my PC, I saw that I had the exposure compensation mistakenly set two stops below what the camera suggested. A year or more ago, I probably would have ignored these thumbnails and moved on to something better exposed. However, I didn't, and here's the image I created. But does it pass muster? I ask that because the image is being viewed quite small, maybe on an iPad. The video would have been compressed a little bit when I created it, and a little bit more, I suggest, when uploaded to YouTube. Now, it's much easier to get away with a less than perfect result under those conditions. And as we look at the technical details along the bottom of the screen, the other problem we've got is dealing with an image shot at 2000 ISO while underexposed two stops. Nevertheless, let's take a look. With the image opened up into Adobe Camera Raw, I've made a very small crop down at the bottom and a little bit on the top. I've hit the auto button, which makes a significant difference. And I've corrected the color balance, removing that magenta cast. Now I shoot the vast majority of my images with aperture priority. So I set the aperture myself and the camera takes care of the shutter speed. But of course, I keep my eye on it within the viewfinder. But here's another thought. First of all, I'm shooting at 2000 ISO for the very reason that I need to keep up that shutter speed to handhold this image. But I've underexposed this two stops by accident. So there is a benefit of that, isn't there? Because what it's done, it's massively increased the shutter speed from what it would have been had I give this two stops more exposure. Just a thought before I move over to my masks. Selecting the masks on the right hand side, I'm going to select the background. Allowing Photoshop to pick up on that. It's picking up all of the log as well, but I'm not too concerned about that at this stage. Because the background is light, so I'm going to take down the highlights and I'm going to take down the exposure. Now I like to take down the exposure quite a bit, but what I don't like is what it's doing about the dark areas here, here, bottom left, and even here. So if we go to the subtract menu, we can remove from the mask we've just created. And we're asked, what do we want to use to do that? I find the brush meets my needs most of the time. I keep the flow rate fairly low, somewhere around 20. And what I'm going to do here is just brush over these areas just to take some of the impact that I put into the background, but I don't want it in those areas because they just look too dark and unattractive. So I'm going to do the bottom left corner and the ones up at the top right as well. Now maybe my image is a little bit too light on the right hand side. I'll just move it a little bit so we can see it more clearly. I'm going to go to my masks and I'm going to choose a linear gradient. Click and drag in from that sort of area. But of course I don't want to incur on the bird itself. So I'm going to subtract from the bird using the option to select the subject. And it's done a brilliant job. Now I just need to make my changes, whether that's a combination of highlights and exposure or even the whites and the blacks. But I think the exposure is doing what I need it to do. But once again, a little bit too dark in small areas. So subtract using the brush. Settings have all remained the same as before. So there's no delay. Just adjust my brush size and I can just lighten any of those shadows or dark areas that I think have gone too far. Now I've just selected back to the basic tab so we can see the image unhindered from the panels on screen. 
I think there's a couple of areas I'd like to deal with. There's a highlight on the edge above the bird, small one top left corner, small one bottom right corner, and a couple of little other light areas here and there. I'm going to deal with all of those with one brush and I'm going to use, well, a brush. So let's go back to the options for masks, the little white cross in the blue circle. I'm going to select my brush. What I'm going to do here is use a little bit of experience and say, well, I want to drop the exposure down, but I'm painting with a low flow. So for example, it enables me to make a nice big brush. Remember the center of this is solid, the outside or between the center and the outside is the soft part. So I can start to paint over there and just take that down to the density I think it needs and the same top left corner and one or two other little areas. One down the right and down the bottom left. You get the idea. And there are lots of personal choices when we're doing things like this. There's a little one down at the extreme bottom left down here that's just annoying me. That would come out easy in Photoshop with a touch of the healing brush, but there it is. We seem to have it done. So let me go back to the basic tabs and we'll take a look because we've managed to get this far pretty quickly. But what I'd like to turn to now is the noise reduction and we'll find that in the detail on the right hand side. There it is, we'll give that a click. And I'll pick a section of the background. So there we can see an after, there's the before. Now we could choose to increase or decrease the amount here, but I'm going to live with what we've got here, which is more or less the default, and enhance it. Once the noise suppression has run its course, I open the image into Photoshop and zoomed in, as you can see, tight on the bird's head to check the quality. Now it looks pretty good, I hope you'll agree, but would it have been better had the exposure been closer to the optimum? I think it probably would, but the moral of the story here is first don't make mistakes, but of course at times we're going to do that. But perhaps not be too quick to write off an image that appears at first glance to be too far gone. It's worth opening the image up into Adobe Camera Raw and hitting that auto button to evaluate what you may have. Now I'll see you next time, but I do need some help with some topics that you'd like to see demonstrated. Send me an email and I'll try to oblige. Bye for now.